hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 2 of what if naruto had the sharingan and the byakugan mix remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out anime king my main channel and if this is the first time you're hearing of anime king Go ahead and check it out. And if you do enjoy the 600 plus what ifs over there, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the anime making family. So, I posted a new episode of What If Sonade was Naruto's mother. So, go ahead and enjoy that. And I also posted a new episode of What If Kurama gave Naruto a dojutsu. So, switch across and enjoy it as well. And later on on this channel, I'm going to be posting Uchi and Naruto, the sage. So stay in tune for all of the lovely what it's coming your way. And remember if you're new to this channel guys, remember to click that red subscribe button and join the anime king family and be a part of the channel. And comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying and talking back to all of you. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. So to do a recap, the last time we left off, I explained about Aizan and Natalie, Naruto's parents, Aizan, Uchiha and Natalie, Hayuga. As Minato and Kushina never had a child and the Uchiha clan and the Hayuga clan came to an arrangement after hearing that two of their clan members are together but Haishi's father still hated it. So on the day when the 90s attack, Minato talked to Haishi's father Saratobi and Fukaku as they talk about something to do, seal the demon inside of something, the newborn baby as Naruto was the only baby born that day. So, the Nine Tails was sealed inside of him, but it was kept a secret. So no one knew about it. Everyone thought that Minato defeated the Nine Tails. Hayashi's father then took the baby Naruto as he brought him back to his clan. When Aizan got there, Aizan was told that Natalie was dead, that she refused to accept the agreement for the demon to be sealed inside of Naruto so they used a cage bird seal on her and she refused and it led to her death as Aizan knew that that was a lie as Hayashi father hated her ever since he found out that she got pregnant by a Uchiha so we then went to the time skip and the massacre happened as Naruto went to check and his father was dead as in a second his eyes changed with the Byakugan and a totem in it but then it vanished as Naruto went to see Sasuke passed out as he went off with Sasuke to Saratobi's house so yeah guys that was basically last part we left off you guys switch across the playlist and check it out for yourself so let's start this new episode weeks has passed after the event as the news has spread through all of the nations that Itachi Uchiha massacred the entire Uchiha clan leaving two survivors alive Naruto Uchiha and Sasuke Uchiha as things have changed a lot Sarutobi put both Naruto and Sasuke up in a room as the both of them couldn't stay at the Uchiha compound he gave the both of them a two bedroom complex in the Shinobi district where the both of them lived together as Sarutobi knew what really happened behind the Uchiha massacre that the Uchiha's were planning a coup but Danzo told Itachi to wipe them out if he wanted to prevent the battle between the Uchiha's and Konoha. And because of Itachi, caring so much about his younger brother, and he also treated young Naruto like a brother as well, he didn't want him to suffer, so he wiped out the entire clan, leaving them behind. So we start this episode with Sasuke, as he was currently sitting on his bed, as he then heard a knock on the door that separated his and Naruto's room away from each other. As the door then opened up, Naruto said Sasuke. As Naruto walked in and sat down in the chair, you told me that you spoke to Itachi after you saw what he did. What did he say to you, Naruto asked. Sasuke just looked at Naruto. He said he did all of this just to test his ability and gaze his power what said naruto as a few tears came at his eyes 
out of pure anger, he did all of this to test his ability and power? Why? I don't know. That is what he told me. I can't understand this, said Naruto. Why did Itachi do this? I have grown up with him. I even thought of him as a brother. And I never saw any evil intent or malice coming from him. Why did he decide to just wipe out the entire Uchiha clan? Why? Naruto said, as now the tears were going down, as he remembered the event, losing his father, as Sasuke just looked at him. I don't know, Sasuke said. That is the only thing he told me. Sasuke said Naruto. As Sasuke looked at him, as no longer tears were flowing from his eyes, as Naruto had a serious look on his face. I am going to kill Itachi, Naruto said, shocking Sasuke a bit, until Sasuke face turned serious. No you're not, said Sasuke. Look, said Naruto, I know he's your brother. That's not what I mean, Sasuke said. You're not the only one that's after him. I want to kill him as well for what he did. Killing every member of our clan, and even my mother and my father. That is why I told you no, because we're going to be the ones to kill him, said Sasuke. As Naruto saw the determination in Sasuke's eyes, we now skip to the graduation day. As both Sasuke and Naruto are in class, as the both of them, attitude has changed a lot. Because of Naruto, Sasuke turned out to be a talkative person as both him and Naruto usually talk to a lot of girls in the class and they have fun and pull some mindless pranks just to have fun. But now everyone saw that their attitude has changed. They no longer smile or laugh. They are always just so serious. And when the fangirls came and rushed at them, they don't pay any of the fangirls any mind. Iruka then walked in the class as he looked at everyone. All right, everyone, said Iruka. Today is your final day at the academy. From this day, you will no longer be kids. You will be grown-ups in the shinobi world. You will be going out on missions. Missions that soon will be brutal and life dangerous. So you have to take this seriously, said Iruka, as he went on with his speech. But neither Sasuke or Naruto were listening to him, as the both of them started training intensely at nights, going out to train in field, doing secret trainings. As the both of them visit by the Uchiha compound, as they search the entire place, they also went to the Naka Shrine, but neither of them could read it because they didn't possess the Sharingan at this moment. But they found scrolls, scrolls that were hidden all around the place, of basic fire techniques and some more evolved b rank techniques, which is, took them a long time to do, but they are getting the hand of it as the both of them are improving their fighting skills at night because they want to be ready for the time when they hunt down and kill Itachi but they know that the two of them are still too weak to do this as Naruto fought Itachi when he was much younger in a sparring match and he knew that his power that he possessed is nowhere near Itachi Naruto was snapped out of his thoughts when Mizuki walked into the room as they then went on to explain the test what is going to happen today and the three tests, the Shadow Clone Jutsu, the Transformation Jutsu, and the Shuriken Test. So, it went off as Aruka and Mizuki went into a room as they called the students one by one. As Naruto saw most of the students coming out, disappointed look on their face and some of them happy with their headbands. As Naruto's name was called before Sasuke, seeing that his letter of his name N was first. Naruto then went into the room. So Naruto, first thing is first. Did the shuriken aim in practice, said Aruka. As he told Naruto to pick up the shurikens on the table, Naruto walked over as he picked up the shurikens. Naruto then closed his eyes. 
Open your eyes, Naruto. What are you doing? Aruka asks. As Naruto throw the shurikens with his eyes closed, the shurikens hit dead in their target. As Aruka was impressed, he knew that Naruto was killed, but able to close his eyes and fire a shuriken and they hit the target. That was just impressive. Now, on to the Shadow Clone Jutsu, said Aruka. Naruto nodded as he summoned two clones, two perfect clones beside him, but he wasn't done there. As Naruto clones, then use a transformation jutsu and they all turn into three perfect replica of Iruka. As Iruka was stunned to be able to perform the shadow clone jutsu and the transformation jutsu together. Impressive! So did I pass? Naruto asked. As Iruka nodded and Mizuki was just looking at Naruto from head to toe. As Naruto didn't pay him any mind as he took the headband and wrapped it around his head. He then left the room as Naruto came out back and he saw Sasuke. Sasuke gave him a quick nod and Naruto gave him back a nod as the fangirls then rushed up to Naruto as they start to celebrate that he passed. As Ino was the leader of the fangirls for Naruto and Sakura was the leader of the fangirls for Sasuke. Sasuke's name was then called as Naruto just gave him a look, saying do your best as Sasuke headed off. Iruka then told Sasuke that the first test was a shuriken aiming jutsu. Sasuke went over and picked them up as he too closed his eyes. So you too huh? As Sasuke threw them and they all hid dead in the center. As Iruka then told him to perform the shadow clone jutsu. But Sasuke only summoned one clone and that clone and himself also transform into two perfect replica of Iruka as Iruka clapped him. Well, very impressive Sasuke as he then handed Sasuke the headband as Mizuki was looking over at Sasuke as well. It seems like the two Uchiha's are quite impressive said Mizuki as he looked at Iruka. Well they are said Iruka with a smile on his face. As he then went on with the list. As Sasuke exited the room, as the fangirls surrounded him, as they were all cheering him on, as he just gave Naruto a nod, and the day pretty much ended like that. But not before they checked the rookie of the year, and both Naruto and Sasuke were tied for the number one position, and Sakura was a top Kunoichi. But Naruto and Sasuke didn't went home, they went to the forest as they start to do their training. By now, the both of them were sweaty and their clothes was drenched with sweat as they were all roughed up as well as they were pushing themselves to the limit every time so they can get stronger. As Naruto handed Sasuke a container with water in it as Sasuke drank it, Naruto then pulled out a scroll as he ran through some hand sign and slammed his hand on the scroll and then a plate appeared with food in it. As he handed Sasuke the plate, he then did the same thing with another scroll and he took the plate as the both of them start to eat and just watch the night fall. After they finished eating and decided that it was time to go home now and get some rest, the both of them heard some ruffling. As they went to check it out, the both of them hopped from trees to trees. When they arrived, they saw Iruka underground with a shuriken in his back as they saw their teacher Mizuki jumping away. What's going on? Sasuke asked. I don't know, said Naruto. As he then focused and saw the scroll in Mizuki's hand. As he heard about that scroll, the scroll of sealing that possessed powerful techniques. Both him and Sasuke then jumped down. Iruka sensei, are you okay? Naruto asked. As Iruka looked at Naruto and Sasuke, what are you guys doing here? Get out of here. What is going on? Sasuke asked him. Mizuki, he's a traitor to the village. He thief, the scroll of sealing. Don't worry, I'll go after him, said Naruto. Before Iruka could stop him, he felt a surging pain in his back as the shuriken was causing him pain so he couldn't stop Naruto. As Sasuke was staying there to give him a helping hand, as Naruto rushed off, Naruto moved through the forest at top speed. 
as he finally arrived at Mizuki, who had stopped running and was walking at a normal pace through the forest, thinking that he got up easily because he went to take the scroll by himself and Aruka was the only one that saw him. No other guards know that this is happening. So, right now he's safe and he knows that Aruka will be out after their battle. He then sent something as he jumped out of the way as four kunais landed where he was. As he turned around to see Naruto, I won't let you leave the village with that scroll, you traitor. Oh, the Uchiha, said Mizuki. As Naruto landed from the tree, yeah, it's me. Now give me the scroll. What of it, boy? Do you really think that you can take me? I am a Chunin. You're nothing but an idiot Jenin brat. Just because you're impressive for Jenin, don't think you can take on a Chunin. Mizuki said as he placed the scroll down and rushed towards Naruto with a kuna in hand with the intent to kill. He came up to Naruto and swiped but Naruto flipped back as Naruto landed on top of the tree. Mizuki jumped up as he came down with a slash to slash Naruto in half but Naruto flipped to the side. Stop moving around brat he said as Naruto flipped off of the tree and he was going down to the ground as Mizuki smiled. Idiot, Mizuki said. As he jumped down, Naruto was now going down to the ground. There was no way he could escape out of mid-air. But Naruto smirked as he ran through hand sign, caught in Mizuki off guard. Fire style. Fire stream, Naruto said, as he spat out a stream of fire out of his mouth that made direct contact to Mizuki. But he pushed himself off of the fire stream, but it still caused him a lot of damage as his arms were burned badly. Mizuki quickly rushed over to the scroll as he stood in front of it. Naruto put his hands together as he summoned two clones. Him and the clone rushed towards Mizuki as Mizuki looked down at his hands. Doesn't matter, even if I can't use my hands at the moment, you still cannot beat me you brat, he said. But Naruto just rushed forward as Naruto wasn't saying a word as Mizuki prepared himself. The two clones jumped up in the air while the real Naruto was still on the ground as Mizuki focused on the real one. The clones came down with a kick as the real Naruto came in with a punch. Mizuki quickly spin around as he used his legs trying to kick the real Naruto but he flipped back. As the clones got the opportunity as they slammed their hands down on his shoulders causing him pain as they then kicked him down to the ground as his face slammed into the ground. The real Naruto then appeared in front of him with one kick. He sent him flying back into a tree as his back slammed against a tree. Naruto then looked down as he looked at a scroll. He then looked at Mizuki as he got an idea. While this was going on, both Aruka and Sasuke were heading towards Naruto as Aruka had his arm around Sasuke's shoulder and they were heading there as it took them a while because Aruka was injured but once he got to his feet and Sasuke gave him a helping hand when they arrived they saw Naruto on the ground blood was coming out of his nose and his mouth it seems like someone beat up on him badly as Sasuke and Aruka rushed over Naruto what happened Sasuke asked as he saw Naruto's injury as Aruka cursed knowing that Mizuki must have beaten Naruto and escaped is already gone, said Naruto. Sorry, Aruka sensei, but I couldn't stop him. Naruto, you did your best, said Aruka. But we have to go back and inform the Hokage office. They won't catch him, said Naruto. He's long gone now. We still have to inform the Hokage, said Aruka. I know, said Naruto. Can you walk, Sasuke asked. Yeah, as Naruto struggling, got back up to his feet. Let's go, he said, as the three of them went off to the Hokage's tower. As they explained the details of what happened, the Hokage had a medic look Naruto over and healed him, and then he was sent home with Sasuke. When they finally arrived home, well, I guess we will need some more training, because you can't meet someone like Mizuki, said Sasuke, as Naruto looked at him. A smirk came on Naruto's face. 
As he pulled out a small scroll, he then unwrapped it as he ran through hand sign. As he then freed what was sealed inside of it, as a large scroll came out. What is this? Sasuke asked as he was surprised. Well, this is a scroll of sealing. The scroll of sealing? Yes, the one that Mizuki tried to take. Wait, so he left the scroll? Well, all that you saw there was a lie. I was the one who defeated Mizuki. And for his part of betraying Konoha, you know how I hate traitors. So I take away his life. You killed him? asked Sasuke. Yes, I did. And I took this scroll. Sasuke, you're not getting what I'm saying, said Naruto. What are you saying? Sasuke asked. This scroll possesses techniques. Techniques that will make us stronger. Far stronger than anything we have ever learned. So we will get enough power to get our revenge. Really? Sasuke said. As he opened the scroll and he saw all sorts of technique inside of it. Shadow Clone Jutsu, Red Stream in Fire. So, what really happened to you? Sasuke asked. Well, I had one of my clones did this to me because we needed to make it look real. So where is Mizuki's body? Don't worry about that. Skipping to a distance away, Naruto's two clones were running as the both of them were carrying Mizuki's body. They then arrived at a cliff with the water rushing down below at a deadly rate. This is the river that the boss said we must throw his body in, said one of the clones as the other one nodded. Well, as they lift up his body and threw it over the cliff, they then looked down as they waited till it hit and the water washed him away. As they poofed away out of sight, everything is now taken care of, said the real Naruto to Sasuke. Alright, said Sasuke, but we need to keep this from anyone's sight. And we need to only use it at night. Yeah, I know that. If anyone find out that we have this, it will be bad. But we must do this to get stronger, Sasuke. It's not like we're going to betray the village or anything like that. We just need power. That this village won't teach us at the moment. But for right now, we're just going to play everything normal. Said Naruto as Sasuke nodded. A few days later, both Naruto and Sasuke were in class. As the both of them were sitting down, Aruka came in the class as today was the day that he told them about the teams. As the teams are going to be same as canon, as Aruka reached the team 7, Naruto Uchiha, Sasuke Uchiha, and Sakura Haruno, as Naruto smirked himself when he heard that he and Sasuke are going to be on one team, he wanted that. And your sensei will be Kakashi Hatake. Naruto heard that name before, but he wasn't so sure about the face. But Sasuke and Sakura didn't know who their sensei was. Sakura then looked over to Ino as she stick out her tongue. Look what Ino, I got the boat of them. Boat Uchiha, she said. Shut up forehead, said Ino as her team name was called as she didn't pay attention to Sakura as she was quite angry that she didn't get Naruto on her team or she was on a team with Naruto. As she looked behind her, she was on a team with the laziest boy in class as she looked at Shikamaru who was sleeping as she just sighed and the fat one as she looked at Choji as Choji smiled back at her as Ino just hung her head down. Damn it, she cursed inside. After a while, the team sensei started to come and pick up their teams, as team 7 was the only one left in the class. After an hour, Sakura was now cursing as she got out of her seat, as she's wondering what the hell is going on and where is their sensei. After another hour, she was cursing out loud as she saw that both Sasuke and Naruto was just calm. Hey, what's wrong with the two of you? He's two hours late, she asks. As they didn't say anything, as she just saw that the both of them were calm and went to sit down. As she was tapping her finger and that was annoying Naruto as she kept on tapping her finger for a long while until he was about to snap when the door opened. As they saw the man, Kakashi Hatake, 
Kakashi then looked around the room with his one eye as he looked at his students. First Sakura, then Naruto, then Sasuke. Naruto then pulled out three kunais out of his pouch as he threw them at Kakashi, who easily dodged them all. Hey, what was that for? Kakashi asked. Well, I just wanted to see if you were really a Jonin, since you let us wait so long here. Because Jonins are more responsible. Look at the room for example. Everyone else is gone. So what took you, Naruto asked, as if he just didn't throw Kunai after Kakashi. Well, I was lost on the road for life, said Kakashi. As Naruto just grunted and didn't say anything else. Alright, so you're Team 7. My name is Kakashi Hatake, and I am going to be your Jonin. So, meet me up on the roof, he said, as he shunned Shin away. As Naruto eyebrow raised, I also need to learn that technique as well. As all three of them went to the roof, as Kakashi was sitting on the railing. Well, since it's the first I've met you all, we're going to be doing the first part of an interview. When you tell me your name and about yourself. As Sokka raised her hand, Kakashi Sensei, she said. Yes, he said. Well, since it's the first time, can you show us? Oh, sure. My name is Kakashi Sensei. And my hobbies. Well, I'm not going to tell you guys that. My likes. Not that either. And my dislikes. Well, not that either. What? said Sakura. You just told us your name. And you didn't even told us your likes or dislikes or your hobby. Oh yeah, said Kagashi. You also have to tell your dream. As Sakura just sighed. Alright, since you spoke first. You go first, he said, pointing at Sakura. Alright, she said. My name is Sakura Haruno. And my likes are... As she looked at Sasuke. Who wasn't paying her any mind. And my dislikes are Eno Pig. And my dream is as she looked at Sasuke again, as she then started giggle, as she just started giggle to herself like she was mad. As Kakashi sighed, a fan girl, he said. As he then looked over to Sasuke, you now, he said. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. And I barely like things. And I dislike a lot of things. And my goal is to kill a certain someone and get revenge for my clan, said Sasuke. As Kakashi narrowed his eyes, he's talking about Itachi, Kakashi wondered to himself. As he then looked over at Naruto, he didn't say anything, he just gave Naruto a glance. You now, said Kakashi, as he thought that Naruto would speak when he looked over to him. Well, my name is Uchiha Naruto, Naruto said, as he then went silent. And, Kakashi asked. That's it. What do you mean, that's it, Kakashi said. Well, you told us your name, and that's my name. So what else do you want to know? And you won't learn them unless you tell us information about yourself. Well, so you're gonna be difficult, said Kakashi. Well, it doesn't matter. I already got a report on all of you. Then why did you make us go through all of this? Sasuke asked. Just to see, said Kakashi. Alright, Kakashi said, as he stood up from the railing. So, tomorrow there will be a test. Come early 7 a.m. tomorrow to train in field 7. And if you don't want to throw up, don't eat any breakfast, said Kakashi. As he then vanished. This guy said Sakura out loud. He just keep on doing this over and over. Tomorrow, I bet he will be late as well. Well, said Naruto speaking to Sakura. If you know he's gonna be late, then just don't show up on time. Yeah, I know but we can't disobey his orders. He's our sensei said Sakura. Naruto didn't answer as he walked over to the railing. As he got up, hey, what are you doing Sakura asked. As Naruto then jumped off, as Sakura rushed over to see him jump on buildings to buildings. You know, he's kind of crazy, she said, as she turned around, but no one was there. Sasuke? 
Sasuke, she called out, but he was already gone. Hours later, Naruto was in his bathroom as he was currently looking at the mirror. As he noticed something when he was training, he felt something and he wanted to see if it was real. He knew about the Sharingan and he'd activate by emotions as he wondered the night that he saw his father. But he knew he felt something when he was training with Sasuke as he was currently looking into the mirror as he's focusing a lot of chakra to his eyes trying to see if anything will happen but his eyes just remain the same hollow colored as he then turned towards the window I wonder when will I get my Sharingan because I need that power I need that power to use against him because I know how strong Itachi is and also those eyes of his I need it I need my Sharingan to defeat him, damn it, said Naruto as he looked into the mirror. As he started to focus the chakra back to his eyes, but nothing would happen. Damn it, he cursed. As he walked over to his bed, he then sat down on his bed. As everything suddenly went black. As Naruto opened back his eyes, what is going on? Did I fall asleep? No, that can't be. As Naruto looked around. He was in some kind of sewer. As he started to walk around, is this a genjutsu? But who could have even heard a growl as he turned to see a giant cage and two giant red eyes? What the hell? He said to himself. But guys, gonna be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to be posted. And remember to stay tuned for Uchi and Naruto the Sage. But for now, I'm out here. Peace.